Hello there everyone, Simon here from IV Audio, and in this video I'm going to be doing a brief overview of functions and macros in KSP. Now if you've done any programming at all in any other language, you're probably very familiar with the concept of a function, so this video is more aimed at people who maybe haven't done as much programming or are just getting started in KSP. Alright, now that all of the professional programmers have left, let's jump right in. To show why functions and macros are useful, let's have a look at this scenario. Let's say that I've got an instrument that has three microphone positions, and I want to give the user control over the volume of each position, as well as a mute and solo button for each microphone position. My code would probably start out looking something like this. I'm just declaring three sliders, three mute buttons, and three solo buttons. And to show you what that looks like, here we go. It's incredibly boring, nothing is positioned correctly, and it's uh, not particularly interesting to look at. So our next step might be to start positioning all of these controls. And the problem, as you can already see, is that that's going to be a lot of statements for positioning all of these very precisely. That's nine separate statements just for the positioning. And then, of course, we're going to get into setting the size of each control, setting the picture, setting the text, maybe creating some labels, creating some more controls, and it's just going to get really, really messy. Now this kind of scenario is the perfect scenario for using a macro or a function. A macro or a function allows you to reuse code so that you don't have to do this copy-paste coding. In order to declare a macro, it's very simple. We just come outside of any of the callbacks. We type macro, then we give our macro a name. In this case, we'll use something like declare fader. And then you give your macro some inputs. So the inputs to a macro can be any text at all that you want, and I'll show you why in a second. For now, I'm just going to use the text name. And you take whatever text you want and you put it in between pound symbols. That's for macros. You want to give yourself an end macro. And now instead of doing all of this declaring inside of the on it directly, we're just going to copy some of it into the macro and then call the macro multiple times. So let's grab ourselves a slider. Let's grab ourselves a mute button and a solo button. Now instead of calling all of these slider mute solo, we're going to call them name underscore slider mute solo. Now we can delete all of this stuff and just call the macro. To do that, we just type its name and give it an input. Now the way these inputs work is whatever I type inside of here will get directly substituted as text into all of these spaces here at compile. So if I put close in here, and then we hit compile, paste it into a separate document, you can see a little bit of what's going on. We no longer have the macro because the macro, you know, contact doesn't have any idea what a macro is. This is entirely part of Nils KScript Editor or Sublime KSP, which are basically the same thing. And as you can see, where we've put close inside of this macro call, it has substituted the text close anywhere that the macro input appears inside of the macro itself. That's a bit of a mouthful to explain, but hopefully this example makes it very clear exactly what's going on. If I want, I can declare some more faders with different names. We can call this one maybe mid, and we can call this one far. And now if we compile this, we suddenly have all of our microphones ready to be used. And if we paste this in, it's going to give us extremely similar results to what we had before, but now we're doing it in much fewer lines of code that are much easier to maintain. So using macros for this sort of thing is a really, really good idea. There's something that makes macros even nicer here, and that is our ability to position all of these UI elements very easily. So to do this, we're going to use a couple variables inside of the on it where we're going to define how we want our elements to be positioned, and then we're going to use those variables inside of our macro to position the elements. Let's get ourselves a couple constants. We'll call one of these UI X. This will just be the main X position. So if we change this, it'll allow us to shift all of the elements horizontally. We'll also declare ourselves a UI Y, maybe 60. Let's declare ourselves something called X spacing. And well, that's really all we need for now. We're also going to give ourselves a temp variable. I tend to use count, but uh, it's more typical to use i for incrementation or something else. I just like count because I think it's a lot more readable. So now what we're going to do inside of this macro is use these variables that we've just declared in order to position these elements. So 
let's move control pixel and let's start with our slider. First off, we want to move the slider to the UI X position. Then we want to add count times the X spacing. And then for the Y position, we'll just use UI Y. We're going to copy this a couple more times for the mute and solo. And then we'll tab these things out so it's a little bit more readable. And instead of using just UIY for all of these, which would put them sort of right on top of each other, I'm just going to add 40 pixels to the mute and 80 pixels to the solo. Now, once we've moved all of our controls, we're going to increment count. And just before we use this macro, we're going to set count equal to zero. So basically what's going to happen here is that at first, count is going to be zero, and we run this macro. So everything's going to get positioned to UIX plus zero times the X spacing. The next time we call this macro, count has gone up by one. So now we're positioning everything to UIX plus one times the X spacing. And of course, the more times we call this, it'll sort of array them horizontally in, in sort of an even spacing. And to demonstrate that, let's just compile this, paste it in, and look at that. Our controls are now all nice and prettily distributed horizontally. If we want to change the spacing, that's really easy. We can just change the value of this variable. And now all of a sudden, our controls are more spaced out. If we want to move them in the X position, we can do the exact same thing here. And now all of our controls are shifted over to the right. This is a much nicer way of working with positioning than having individual positioning and declarations for everything. Uh, so this is the perfect scenario to use a macro, really. Obviously, this is not the best method in the world, uh, because if somewhere in this macro we want to use count for something other than just positioning, we're going to run into problems. If we set count equal to 5 or something here, obviously that's going to throw everything off. So you just need to be careful if you're using this kind of method that you don't accidentally reuse your incrementation variable uh, or you don't use it inside the macro itself because that'll cause problems. And there's other ways you can get around this. If we wanted to, we could pass a second parameter to this. And instead of using count, we could use index. And then inside of here, we could just put the position of all of these that we wanted can get rid of the count stuff. And now we've got a very similar solution to what we had before. We can individually adjust the positions of all of these uh, as multiples inside of the grid, essentially, which is just another way to work. And there's plenty of other ways you could do it. Now, functions are very similar. You declare them outside of any callbacks. You give them inputs. Uh, but functions actually have the ability to return values, which can be very, very useful. So let's declare ourselves a function here. And let's just set up a function to add two values and output the sum of those two values. So maybe we'll do x and y. And then to give our function a return value, we do this little thing, uh, minus symbol and a right caret, and then just whatever text we want. Now you may have noticed something different from macros, which is that functions do not need the pound symbols on either side of, uh, of their inputs or the output for that matter. So now inside of our function, we're just going to set this arbitrary value, treat it sort of like a variable that's local to the function. We're going to set this value of output equal to x plus y. Uh, and let's actually get rid of all this stuff for this demonstration. And all we'll do is message so that we see the result. We're going to call our function called add, and then we're going to pass it the values 4 and 5. And if we now paste this into contact, it's going to be incredibly boring. But there we go. We get our value of 9 down there in the bottom left corner. Now, functions can be incredibly useful for this kind of thing. You can uh, set up functions that allow you to retrieve parameters from contact. Uh, they're a really great way to sort of add abstraction to your code or repeat certain things quickly, like setting key colors maybe, or checking if a particular condition is true. And the fact that they allow return values is what makes functions very powerful as compared to macros.
So once again, that was just an incredibly quick overview of functions and macros. Hopefully that all made sense and was useful. If it wasn't, let me know in the comments what I could have done better or what other topics you'd like me to cover. As always, I hope this was somewhat useful to you, and thanks very much for watching. Bye-bye.